Welcome to Life Podcast. We believe you're going to enjoy today's content, which is about living the life that you've always wanted to live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. We're so glad that you're here. So glad you're joining us. I don't know if you're driving, if you are watching this from home, but you're going to be glad that you are here today. I'm here with Karen Reitmeyer. She is a part of our team here at Life Church 7, and she has a ministry called Freedom Coaching Encounters. Is that Freedom right? Encounters Coaching. Freedom Encounters. Freedom yes. Encounters. I got it backwards. Freedom okay. Encounters Coaching. And uh, she is a freedom bringer mm-hmm. wherever she goes. She's an atmosphere changer. And some of you right now, you're listening to this and you're saying, I need my atmosphere changed. I need some things in my <laughs> life changed. Well, you have joined the right podcast and uh, stay along with us because I believe in this podcast, you're going to experience breakthrough. You're going to experience the joy of the Lord and you're going to experience um, some new revelation, some new insight on inner healing and on freedom. And so we're really, really glad that you've joined us today and we're really expectant that God's going to move. I am already feeling the presence of the Lord here. It's because any time I get around Karen, I just feel the Lord. But Karen, uh, would you start by telling us how, how did this come about, you know, freedom encounters and how did you kind of step into that in your life? The, the short answer is that I was a train wreck. <laughs> Literally. That's kind of how we all yeah, step into exactly. this. Exactly. <laughs> I had so much brokenness and just so much pain just from childhood and life and kept stuffing it all away. Mm-hmm. And one day I was at work at a hotel in Spokane and we had a shooting. And after that, like every unresolved issue I had was like right here. Mm. And so I had no choice but to do something. You know, I could medicate, I could drink again, I could do drugs again, or I could do something with it. And in that instance, the Lord was like, "Um, hello, I'm right here. I'm right here. I protected you. He protected me amazingly. Wow. a whole other story. (laughs) So you're working in a hotel Mm -hmm. in Spokane. Mm -hmm. There's a shooting that happens. The Lord protects you in that. And you have a choice. Mm-hmm. Am I going to, I have all this, this trauma just happened. I have all this stuff from my past right in front of my face. Yeah. And now I have a choice. Am I going to turn to what I've done in the past, which is just numbing things? Or am I going to face this with the Lord yeah. and get healing? Yeah. And you chose door number two. <laughs> you chose healing. And I think people who are watching right now, people who are listening right now, they, yeah. they we're always faced with choices. Yes. What am I going to do? with what I'm facing? What am I going to do with <laughs> what's happening in my life? And I don't want to cycle anymore. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't, I want to be free of this. Yeah. And yeah. so it sounds like that's, that's what you chose. Now, what, what's been the journey since, since you've chosen that? The journey since that has been letting the Lord love me. That was the biggest thing mm. is letting him love me. That's the biggest way he pursued me. I'd have different encounters. I was working in a bar one time, watching a show on TV, and his love came through the TV <laughs> and, like, washed over me, and it freaked me out. And then I went home, and the exact same thing happened. You mean it the doesn't same just happen show. at church? <laughs> no, it happened in a bar. That was my most major encounter with the Lord was bartending. So wow. he can get you anywhere. Yes. But he was relentless in pursuing me with his love. Wow. And then he brought me back to the Tri-Cities where I grew up, which I fought tooth and nail. I moved to Arizona first. was like, no, I'm not doing it. But, yeah, but I You came moved back. to Arizona, by the way, like in the middle of summer. In June. Right? In yeah. June, yes. How the was beginning that? of the hottest part of the year. Let's just Lord, call that the Arizona belly of the whale. Where, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. The belly of the whale. That's so good. And he spit you back out he in did. Tri-Cities. <laughs> he did. And I've been here ever since. Oh, but awesome. Just getting to know who he really is. Yeah. And who he says I am. Like all those things I believed about myself because of my past. He's like, oh, that's actually not true. Wow. That's not what I see when I look at you. This is who I see you are. How do you think that plays like in the journey of freedom and inner healing? It, you know, letting God love you, like letting that happen. I feel like that's got to be the first step mm-hmm. to freedom is is receiving. <laughs> It is. It is. And if we don't get rid of the things we're believing that are keeping him this way, because he never goes anywhere. 
It's like we just turn around and we're not looking at him. Mm. He's like attached to your back. You know, you you turn and you're like, where did he go? And he's like, oh, I'm right here. Yeah. You know, he doesn't go anywhere. But we turn from him and we turn our attention elsewhere and we focus elsewhere. Mm. And we get in this place where we can focus on, oh, I've got to fix myself. Because now I see that God actually loves me. So I need to clean myself up. I need to fix myself. Yeah. And we can get addicted to looking internally yes. to find what's wrong with us. Yeah. And I totally did that. For years I did that. I was always looking at, oh, I need to get delivered from this. I need to get delivered from this. And, and God's like, no, how about if you just come sit here with me? <laughs> you know, look at me. Look at me. Don't look at that. Look at me. Wow. And, and we take ourselves on as a project to be fixed rather than a person who needs to be loved. Wow. And so then we treat other people that way. Like people who are difficult, like we see them as a project I need to fix, but no, they're a person wow. that needs to be loved. And that just makes the process faster, easier. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that is so good. Cause I, I'm just thinking like, I mean, older days you'd go to Barnes and Noble, right. Or, or some bookstore Hastings, you know, some bookstore and it'll have the self-help section. And now that's just on Amazon. Like you can go on Amazon right now and there's, there's a whole genre of books that are just self-help, self-improvement. And it can quickly come into, yeah, striving, performing. It can quickly become, I got to get myself cleaned up. And now I'm like only looking and seeing my problems. And I think that's so good to just, you know, that first step of just l- quit looking inwardly, quit looking mm-hmm. at yourself, look at him, yeah, look at Jesus, yeah. And I, I think if you're if you're listening to this right now, take this as a prompting from the Lord. Yeah, like hit the pause button right now, <laughs> and you've heard enough for so far. Don't 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 hit the, the exit button, but hit hit the pause button and um, just look to the Lord right now. Say, mm-hmm. Jesus, I receive your love. Yeah. Jesus, I receive the fullness of your love that you paid for on the cross yeah. for me. Yeah. And that I think what I'm hearing from uh-huh. you is that is the basis, the beginning, yeah. the genesis of, of freedom, of healing. It, it totally is. And because um, I think it's Bill Johnson is who I heard this from, but he says that we don't have permission to look at our past apart from the blood of Jesus. Wow. Because I don't own my past. Jesus does. But wow. he will take me places that are affecting me today. So I can't figure that out myself. I can look at all the things and go, oh, I have to fix all these things. But he's like, no, actually, let's take this one thing. And he takes that one thing and he heals it. And you're like, wow, all that other stuff stopped. Mm. Okay. Wow. That was, the, you know, that was the project. That, that was, was it. The root. Yeah, that, that was the was... one thing I needed was wow. there. And I thought it was something else. But he's like, no, 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 I'll do this. Yeah. So he definitely walks us through our past, but he does it very strategically because mm-hmm. he knows the lies that are core identity issues for us. And that's really the problem. It's the lies we're believing mm-hmm. because what we agree with allows the enemy access to harass us. Yeah. So when I agree with lies about myself, I'm giving him permission to prove to me that it's true over and over again. And so he orchestrates my circumstances to reinforce the lie that I'm worthless or whatever, you know, whatever that lie is, I'm rejectable. Mm. Nobody loves me. I need to go sit in a corner and feel sorry for myself. I'm a victim, you mm-hmm. know, all these things. And it allows the enemy to harass us. And we think, oh, I need to get rid of this spirit. I need to get deliverance of this spirit out. Well, why is that spirit there? Yeah, there's that's a, actually the problem. There's a stronghold. Yeah. There's a house that's been built yeah. around wrong beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. So when the truth comes in, then there's no place for that spirit to land anymore. And you get delivered in an instant by Jesus speaking one sentence. Yeah. So one of the things and just it's really fascinating. You just said a lot of very, <laughs> very profound things in a short amount of time, because this is your life and this is this is your life message, really. Uh, one of the things you've talked about is, you know, Jesus died on the cross, all authority in heaven and earth, it's his. Mm-hmm. He's taken all the power of the enemy. The enemy has no power over him. And if you're in Christ, the enemy doesn't have power over you. Um, But he gains power. What I've heard you say before, he gains power through agreement. And in fact, that's what he did in the garden to get power even over humanity from the beginning. 
yeah. was the power of agreement. Can you describe that or explain that to people listening? What, what, do, what do you mean by the power of agreement? So the enemy has power, but he has no authority unless we agree with him. So if you look back at, at the garden, mm -hmm. what really happened was the enemy was convincing them that something about them wasn't true. They were already like God. They mm -hmm. were made in his image. They had access to everything, but they had one rule, right? Mm -hmm. Don't eat the tree. They had one rule, Yeah. all of that. And they had one rule, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but the enemy came along and was like, oh, I want to be your ruler. Wow. I want to be your ruler. So let me tell you this lie. It's true. Mm -hmm. And so they moved from one kingdom to another. They moved from one system of government to another in one decision. Like, oh, maybe that is true. So how, how it works, how that, this is how the enemy works. He doesn't ever change his strategy, is he gives you a thought. He can't read your mind, but he knows what thoughts he gave you, right? So he gives you a thought. Oh, for me, rejection's been a lifelong issue that mm -hmm. I can still partner with if I choose to. Mm -hmm. I'll have a thought. Oh, why didn't they talk to me? oh, well, they probably don't like you anymore. And if I focus on that thought, if I like open the consideration door in my heart, that if that thought is true, I just gave it power. And then the enemy reminds you of mm. all the other times that he made that true in your life. Mm. I remember this time, I remember this time. Oh, so actually nobody likes you. What are you even doing here? You should just go home. You shouldn't even be here. Mm. And none of that's actually true but I've just given power to this system. And now rejection, I've partnered with the spirit of rejection because of those thoughts. Wow. Instead of the truth, which maybe they were having a bad day. Did you ever think about that? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I think that's actually the, the power of God's words. Cause it says, you know, in, in Corinthians it says to take captive mm -hmm. every thought and make it obedient. And I, I think you're absolutely right. The enemy comes in in thoughts, and then I have a choice with that thought. Is this, mm -hmm. is this true or not? Do I agree? Yeah. Do I agree? And if I disagree, then I say, actually, God's word says. So I have God's word, and I memorize God's word, um, and that's actually uh, how I defeat, you know, the sword of the spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. the, it's the word of God. Yeah. And that's how I defeat and say, actually, I'm gonna cut that thought <laughs> out. <laughs> I'm gonna say that isn't true. It could even feel true. Right. It could even feel like, yeah, I, I feel like that's true. But no, it's not true because God's word says different. So I'm going to believe God's word over even the thoughts that I have. Mm -hmm. And ha so one of the powerful things that um, with, with inner healing that I've experienced is just choosing to disagree, like mm -hmm. breaking agreement. So say somebody, just hypothetically, somebody's listening, <laughs> just hypothetically to this, and they're starting to realize, oh, I've actually given the enemy authority through agreement. Can you walk us through maybe some steps to say, I know I need to disagree. <laughs> I need to break up with that thing yeah. right now. Yeah. What's the process of, of you know getting out of that? It's as easy as being like, wow, okay, so Jesus, I agreed with this. I agreed with rejection. I agreed with suicide. Well, I agreed with brokenness. Mm. I'm choosing to disagree, and I'm breaking up with those things. Mm. What do you have for me in exchange? And he will always show up and give you truth. He'll show mm. up and give you something. Sometimes it's just his presence, his love. You know, you feel him there. Yeah. You just know he's there. But it's that easy. As easy as it was for you to agree, it's that easy to disagree. And so you just disagree, and then you take back the authority you gave away. Mm -hmm. Like So I disagree with that rejection, and I'm taking back any authority I gave to it, and I'm closing the door to you. So when you say, what do you have for me in exchange, mm -hmm. are you just kind of waiting and, and listening, or, or are, you, are you using multiple senses because i know god's given us ears mm -hmm. to hear but he's also you know given us other senses are you just working with all the senses god's given you and waiting for him to come in one of those yeah, ways the easiest is to pay attention to whatever you're hearing seeing or sensing mm -hmm. like you may have a thought or you may just feel peace or you may feel warmth or you may see something in your imagination in your mind's eye any of those ways that he speaks to you 
Mm-hmm. A lot of times I'll have a scripture come to mind. Yeah. That's, that's the truth I need. Or he'll he'll just remind me of something or he'll show me something or he'll speak. I'll hear in my thoughts. It's the way I, where I hear the Lord most is in my thoughts. Mm-hmm. And so I'll hear in my thoughts something that wasn't there a minute ago. And it's good. So if it's good, <laughs> yeah. then, it, you know, I know it came from him. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Do you like when you're having this sort of um, healing experience, do you do you tend to like write these things down or what do you do just to remember them? Is there any any sort of like practical tip you'd give mm-hmm. somebody while they're doing this? The best thing is to write down what the truth is. Mm-hmm. Write down what Jesus did. Because you don't have to remember what the thing is you gave up because it doesn't really exist anymore because you let go of it. Yeah, It only existed because of your agreement. And when you break your agreement, it doesn't exist in you anymore. And so you need to remind yourself of the truth because the enemy will come back and he'll be like, "Yeah, hey, can I get back in that door? Yeah. Hey, hey, how about this? You know, And he'll try to come take that ground back mm-hmm. that, that you gave back to the Lord. Yeah, And he'll come back and he'll try. But if I'm armed with, no, this is what Jesus said. It doesn't feel true to me yet, but I'm choosing to believe that this is true. And mm-hmm. then my feelings will catch up. Sometimes for some people, it feels true immediately. They're like, oh, yeah, that feels true. But other people, they didn't feel anything. They just had a thought, and they chose to believe that was Jesus. And then your feelings catch up later. But if you have that truth to remind you what you're standing on, it's like your ammunition. Yeah. Like, oh, no, no, this is what Jesus said. Okay, I don't care how I feel. This is what Jesus said was true. So I'm yeah. going to stand on that. Yeah. And when we get to that place where we're not moved by what we feel, the enemy doesn't have any ground. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not moved by how I feel. Whether I feel good or bad doesn't matter. What matters is what's true. And what I know is true becomes the anchor in me. And I can always look back when I feel crazy out here. I can lean inside and go, oh, no, everything's peaceful in there. Yeah. So no yeah. matter what happens, I'm going to be okay. And that's one of the things that he likes to use the most is the fear of, well, what if this is true? Well, yeah. what if it is true? I'm still going to be okay. Yeah. I'm still going to be okay. And when we get to that place, nothing can move you. Yeah. You can be unmovable. You can be unshakable no matter what's going on around you. And even no matter how I feel, I may feel all the chaos and the things happening, but in my spirit, it's calm. Yeah. (laughs) Jesus is asleep in the boat. You know, he's got peace. So, okay, we're going to be okay. So well, what are you going to threaten me with? Are you going to, are you going to kill me? Okay, well, I'll be in heaven with Jesus. Okay, yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. Whether I go to sleep tonight and don't wake up tomorrow, I'm still going to be okay no matter what happens. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's interesting that you say that because I, I was just reminded of like Danny Silk. Um, I, I te- I'm talking with my kids about this because they'll say, you made me angry. You made me do this. <laughs> and I'm trying to teach them like, actually, nobody made you. <laughs> You decided, yeah. you decided to do that. You decided to be angry. And I think that's one of the things that you're just talking about is I, outside, I can have all sorts of things happening, but I'm responsible for what's happening inside. I'm, yeah. I'm responsible for my beliefs. And one of the things that I've, I've done even with um, inner healing is, you know, what do you have for me exchange? I'll hear the Lord say something. And what I usually do is I'll, I'll make that into, into a declaration. So if I've had like, you know, personally, if I've battled orphan mentality, Mm -hmm. I start to declare, actually, I am my, my father's son. Yeah. I belong to the family of God. I have all that I need. And I have a God who provides more than enough. You know, these are just declarations that when I start saying that things start to change and, um, that's the power of, of, of declarations. That's the power of declaring God's word and what's, what he said to you. So yeah. um, one of the things I wanted to kind of talk about is, you know, somebody might be watching this and be like, this is all good. Nah, that's great. Where is it in the Bible? <laughs> you know, where, where is this in the Bible? I see physical <laughs> healing in the Bible. I don't see any of this inner healing stuff. This, this seems like, you know, new agey or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. whatever you hear from people. Um, so can you take us, I know there's there's a specific story that I've heard you use before, but can you take us to a passage in scripture that Absolutely. gives us like a biblical um, 
precedent for inner healing? Yes. So the story in Luke 17, where Jesus healed the 10 lepers, super familiar to people who are familiar with the Bible, but if you're not, it's okay. So um, I'll just read it really quick. Mm -hmm. So in Luke 17 and verse 11, it says, Jesus traveled on towards Jerusalem and passed through the border region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered one village, 10 men approached him, but they kept their distance for they were lepers. They shouted to him, mighty Lord, our wonderful master, won't you have mercy on us and heal us? When Jesus stopped to look at them, he spoke these words, go to be examined by the Jewish priests. They set off and they were healed while walking along the way. One of them, a foreigner from Samaria, when he discovered that he was completely healed, turned back to find Jesus shouting out joyous praises and glorifying God. When he found Jesus, he fell down at his feet and thanked him over and over, saying to him, you are the Messiah. So where are the other nine, Jesus asked. Weren't, the ten, weren't there ten who were healed? They all refused to return and give thanks and give glory to God except you, a foreigner from Samaria. Then Jesus said to the healed man lying at his feet, Arise and go. It was your faith that brought you salvation and healing. Mm. And if we look at the, the Greek words there for, for healing and for salvation, at first they were healed, which it means that they were cleansed. Mm -hmm. They were healed from their affliction. But when the one came back and was grateful, when he left Jesus, he left whole, which is the word sozo, mm -hmm. which means salvation, healing, and deliverance. So it's wow. the whole package. So it's not just a cleansing, but it's like... It's the whole package. Every part yeah. of you. So this guy was a leper. No one had touched him physically since he had leprosy. He had to live with all the other lepers. He had to live in the, the commune of victims. They're mm -hmm. all victims of this disease, yeah. and I'm stuck here, and I can't have any contact with my family, with people I love, any of that. So maybe he was struggling with some rejection, perhaps, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, some abandonment, some loneliness, feeling like a victim, mm -hmm. like, what did I do, you know, to deserve all that? And, and Jesus restored him emotionally as yeah. well as physically, Yeah, restored him to wholeness, which is what Jesus came to do, right? Yeah. He came to restore us to wholeness. So you said the word sozo, mm -hmm. saved, healed, delivered. Yep. And so kind of how I think about that is like, um, you know, they're, the person, they were cleansed, so their body was healed, mm -hmm. but their soul and their spirit were not. was not healed. Yeah. I, I feel like we live in an age where people are so focused on body healing mm -hmm. And yet we live in the most anxious, <laughs> um, depressed yeah. society yeah. probably in history. And the number one medication in America is anxiety medication yeah. right now. So we, we've focused on body healing, but our souls need mm -hmm. healing, our spirits need healing and what i'm just from what the passage that you read what i'm seeing with this one he got the full package he got the full meal deal he got the full package of healing and and he came back to yeah. jesus and he said i i <laughs> thank you and he said your faith is, has so zoed you it's it's fully healed you and so i would say there's definitely a biblical <laughs> precedence then for Absolutely. for inner healing. Absolutely. There's a place for inner healing. Um, you know, we we at the church and I I've I've experienced this with you is we have a ministry, we, we call it Sozo. It's probably the most familiar. There's a book called Sozo if you mm -hmm. want to read it. It's really good by Donna De Silva. Um, but can you can you briefly describe what is a Sozo um, experience? Because now I'm I'm intrigued, you know, as a listener. I'm talking for you. And now I'm intrigued as a listener. Yeah. Describe what is, can I have, like, what is a sozo in terms of an experience? Can I, can I get a sozo? Like, 
I know I need inner healing. What what does that yeah. look like? So Sozo is a set of tools mm-hmm. that we use to help people connect. The goal of, of a Sozo is to get you fully connected to God as your father, to Jesus, and to Holy Spirit. Mm. Because each part of him, even though he's one, mm-hmm. each part of him provides something different for us. And when we can get, if we can get fully connected to him, then everything in our life will change yeah. because we won't be trying to figure it out ourselves anymore. And so it's just a set of tools where we work through what your, your earthly family was meant to teach you who God was, mm-hmm. right? Only Jesus had perfect parents. Yeah. The rest of us are going to have some issues to work through. Yeah. And so the things we've experienced have given us a lens that we see God through and keeps us from connecting with him. Like if I had an angry father, I'm going to believe that God's angry. And why would I want to connect to somebody who's angry? Yeah. When actually he's the most loving being in the universe that ever existed. Yeah. That in one moment in his presence can change a lifetime of pain. Wow. But I have to get in his presence. And sometimes I need help. Yeah. Sometimes Jesus sozos you on his own. He walks you through things, you know, people have dreams. I've experienced dreams. that personally. Yeah, yeah. Totally. He walks I you through I had a vision things. where it just, the Lord came and I got really deep healing. Yeah. Um, so I've experienced, I, I've experienced um, Sozo ministry and um, a few times with, with, uh, with, with you and it's really helped me connect with the Lord. And I think that's the whole purpose of it. Is that's it's, the goal. I mean, if you were to, you know, compare it to uh, an experience, it's kind of like a counseling experience in terms of um, somewhat. I'm trying to define like the setting for people. It's kind of like you you're in a room and there's somebody who's kind of guiding the mm-hmm. conversation, but it's really an experience with you and God. It's not. We're there to facilitate yeah, you connecting yeah. with the Lord, and yeah. and we have things we can do that will help you. It's not a counseling session per se, because we're not going to sit and talk about your whole entire life. Exactly. And that's the difference. I was more yeah. thinking like the setting of yeah. it. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to sit. Um, there'll be two or three of us in the room with you. Sometimes one it just depends, but we're going to ask Holy Spirit what he wants to do for you yeah. and let him lead because he knows the places that, that you need to go. And I've been in multiple sessions where I'm like, oh, I see the problem is right here. I see what that is. But that's not what Jesus was doing. Yeah. And Jesus went all around here and here and here and here. And when we came back here, this problem was gone Mm -hmm. because I was seeing that problem, but Jesus was seeing why it was there. Yeah. And so he takes you right there so you don't have to figure it out. You just get to connect with him. And sometimes we need somebody to help us figure out how we're hearing from him. Yeah. You know, there's just things in the way that we believe or things that happen to us that we just need someone to help us walk through. Yeah. To get fully connected to him. Yeah. Some of the most powerful encounters I've mm-hmm. ever had have been in those Sozo um, experiences. Um, say someone's here locally and they're, they're like, I, I, I think I need that. I think I need to do that. Is there a way to like sign up or? There is. You can go to our website. It's freedomencounterscoaching.com. There's a, we talk about. We, we call it a freedom session. Mm-hmm. Sozo, Sozo is some of the tools we use, but we do have other things that we do as well. But it's all Holy Spirit leading you to yeah. freedom. But So freedomencounterscoaching.com, you can read about what we do. Talks about who, who should have a freedom session. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what does that look like? And then you can schedule an appointment right there. Yes. Or you can email us from the website if you have questions. Now, say somebody's listening to this and they're not in the area. Is there... Do you do like Zoom? We do Zoom sessions, yep. Do, okay. When you go to schedule, there's an option to pick a Zoom session as well. Awesome. We'd be happy to help people. Yes. Get some freedom. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And this is biblical. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that God wants for all of us. It is for freedom yes. that Christ has made you free. Yeah. So make sure, what's the Galatians 5.1? Galatians 5.2 says, make sure you stay free. <laughs> don't let anyone steal yeah. your freedom from yeah, you. Yeah, don't fall back into slavery yeah. to the law yeah. once yeah. again is what that says. And I think, you know, personally for me, I, I get this ministry regularly. Mm-hmm. Me um, too. <laughs> I get it regularly. So it's not like... I have arrived. I am inner healed. You know, actually. I have no issues left whatsoever. Know, talk no. to my friends or my family. 
they will have recommendations yeah, <laughs> for what yeah. you need. But this to me um, is like you know, Pastor talks about the world's version of becoming the best version of yourself. Yeah, right. That's where I look at me. This yeah. is God's version yes. because you're made in His image, and we're all going to reflect Him differently. And so the kingdom version of your best self is you connecting with Jesus and him showing you who he says you are. Yes. Not what the world says. So that's the world's is the counterfeit where I have to figure out what's wrong with me and I have to improve all these things about me and my body and all how I'm thinking, all those things. They're not necessarily bad, but the source of them comes from you. Yes. Right? And yeah. Jesus is the source of life. Yeah. He's the author of life. So if I really want to be the best version of myself, I need someone who knows me better than I know myself to tell me who I really am. Yeah. Because I don't know. And who knows you better than yourself? Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. There's only one you. actually. <laughs> There's only one. It is the designer. Yeah. We are the design. He is the designer. Yeah. He is the architect, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Yep. And um so we got to look to him. We got to yes. look to him. Um so as we finish up this talk together, um, I know there's listeners who are in different places. I just, what do you think the Lord, um, I just want to give you freedom because this is freedom <laughs> encounters. Is there something um, that's on your heart or someone, or maybe maybe you're getting a word of knowledge for someone who's, who's listening, who's watching this? Yeah. Why don't you just share yeah. what the Lord's saying to you? I, I really feel like that there's multiple people that are watching this or that are going to see it later that feel very hopeless and even suicidal at times mm. and anxiety and PTSD. And I just feel like the Lord wants you to know that he's so for you, that he created you mm. and he knows the pain that you're in and he sees you in your pain. And if you'll, if you'll just mm. say help, if you'll just say Jesus help, you know, just lean into him, then he will come and he will meet you right there yeah. and he will set you free. Suicide is not the answer. It's a spirit that wants to destroy you and you don't have to partner with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I used to have PTSD and panic attacks and all that craziness and wanted to go drive my car off a cliff, but something inside me said, no, that's not who you are. And so I didn't. And mm. now, now I know who that was talking yeah. to me. Yes. Now I know. So I just want to pray. Yeah. Is that okay? Yes, okay. please release, release <laughs> yeah. freedom. Release it. Yeah. yeah, so Jesus, we just declare freedom for mm. every person watching who's struggling with hopelessness, yeah, with, with suicidal thoughts, with anxiety, with PTSD. Yeah, we just bind those spirits and we hand them to you and we just declare your love. Just be released right now into those hearts, right now into those hearts. And, and some of you are even, you're stuck in something traumatic that happened to you a long time ago. And that breaks now. Mm -hmm. That breaks now because you're not that person anymore. And those things that happened or those things that you did, they're not who you are. And Jesus breaks shame off of you now and he releases freedom to you. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. He releases freedom to you right now because he chose you. He chose you and he paid for everything. He paid for it all so that you could be his and so that you could know the father. And so we just declare, um, I just declare sozo dreams over you that you would receive healing and freedom even in your dreams and you would wake up feeling different than when you went to bed and those cycles would stop and you would have hope. We declare hope over you. Mm. Yeah. Wow. In Jesus name. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Karen, for Thank coming. You. And those who Thanks who've listened, um, we just declare life over you. Mm -hmm. We declare life and the, yeah. the sozo life of Jesus saved, healed, delivered. Yes. That what we read about in Luke 17 would be over your life. That through, through returning to Jesus through Thanksgiving, and through rejoicing, you you would experience the fullness of God in your life. So again, thank you for watching. This is Life with Life Church 7, and we look forward to you joining us for our next podcast. Have a great day. Thank you for joining our podcast on this episode. We'd love to share more with you, and if you'd like to know more about that, you can find us at lifechurch7.com.